in the year, depending on what's out, like when, when is the state paying in, when you get advocacy aid, uh, you know, when uh, grant revenues come in, all that kind of stuff. That dictates, you know, how your balance, you know, rises and falls, in addition to when you owe other people. Like, you know, when we pay keen tuition, it's, what is it, one and a half million dollars. So that number can go down very, very quickly when that bill becomes due. So um, that's a high number for January, but I know we got some payments in more than perhaps we anticipated. So I would, I would start small and try to build it up based on how the cash flow is moving. Um, we do get, uh, our payments are higher <coughs> from the town now as well uh, for this uh, school year. So uh, that's to our advantage as well. That gives us a little bit more flexibility on how we move those funds and if we move those funds. Now, what I just passed out to the board was an email that I received from our current bank representative back in June. My estimate was low, apparently. I estimated we floated between a million and two million dollars a month. His estimates, he says we average um, two and a half million in balances with a low of 1.3 and a high of 3.3. Those are his figures, not mine.
As far as earnings on investment, if we participate in the pool, keep in mind that currently they're paying 5.36% interest, and it's not a fixed rate. I mean, it's not like a CD, you're locking your money up for six months or a year. Um, it's like a money market, you can withdraw it at any time. But keep in mind that our rate and the pool rate will vary depending on what the Fed does. It, it depends on what the federal rate is. So what we probably, right now we're targeting zero, and I'm sure, I don't think there are any taxpayer in, in town would object to us getting 20, 30, $40,000 in interest uh, as an extra revenue. I understand that. I don't quite think you're, you're getting it. What I'm saying is, so we've got our budget. We know that we take what Kevin wants to do to the building, and figure out approximately how much it's going to cost, and say this is what you have to spend. But if we're going to say, oh, well, we're going to get 300 and something thousand dollars from this, we put it in our budget, and then it doesn't come through because this, whatever, the Fed's changed it and dropped the rates or whatever, now, we don't have the money we thought we did, and now we're in the negative. If, and that's what I'm trying to figure out is how the logistics of how that works. That's my question on that. So when you do your budget, you don't budget your revenue. And you just, you just do your expenses. Plan. And then what happens is we submit a form to the DRA. We estimate our revenues every year, right? So we estimate based on what our tax rate is what we're getting in, in terms of payment from the town. Uh, we do grant, we estimate grant revenues, perhaps some nominal levels of interest. But when you do your budget, you're not, um, you're not estimating your revenues. I'll do an estimation of revenues based on what I know the revenue sources are at the time. And then that money goes, then that report goes to the DRA, and they use that to help calculate the tax rate for the next year. So if we were to get monies before the end of this year, um, I don't know that we would estimate it for the 20, we haven't estimated anything in 24, 25. So there's really, the only impact would be a positive impact in the, in the tax rate for the year after that. So when you do your budget, all you're doing is looking at your expenditures and then it's your tax rate that in addition to your revenues, that helps determine how much money you need in order to support that budget. So, so you don't have to worry about that type of thing when you're budgeting. You'll, you'll have in the back of your mind that there's probably a little cushion there because you're going to have an additional source of revenues, but you're not going to you're not going to you're not going to be forced to figure out what that number is. And that was. Have a clear understanding on how it's going to work. Um, another suggestion, I guess, um, is that according to the RSA 197.23a, um, it says that at least yearly the school board shall review and adopt an investment policy for the investment of public funds in conformance with the provisions of the applicable statutes. And I looked up our investment uh, school board policy, uh, it's policy DFA-R, and it was last reviewed six years ago. So, and there is one change, uh, there's a legal reference to RSA 383.22 that no longer exists, that needs to be changed to the RSA 645.
So I think you can you can just endorse it. I don't know that you need to motion it. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think by consensus, if you agree that we can implement the policy, then that's what we'll do. Yes, you're, you're correct. There is a policy in place that um, I, in conjunction with the superintendent, can make that choice, I guess. It, the board has already approved that under the policy. Right, it's just because it's um, under discussion before, we want to make sure that everybody um, is okay with proceeding with it. And with you being our treasurer, if we go ahead, if we go ahead with this, will you be coming to at least once a, a meeting once a month to let us know how it's going? <coughs> you know, I, I can, but in the past, I think it was done by Alicia Jackson when she was our business manager a few years back. Um, yes, but you're our treasurer. That's right. That is part of your responsibility to tell us. What would us you like me to do, John? Come to a meeting once a month and tell us how it's going. Okay, I would have to get that information from Cheryl, probably. <laughs> and and that's then, good well, then you're going to need me to <laughs> share. Although, oh, give us a little grace period so we can get no, that all set. No, no, that's fine. We'll work it out. So, Cheryl, you're saying that we I think by consensus that you that we just want to make sure everybody's aware, given all the previous conversations, that um, in, you can feel free to motion it, but because you already have a policy where you allow for it, we just want to make sure that you all um, are okay with us proceeding down this road. Any other questions? I'm okay. I mean, it, it makes sense to me um, that now it's an extension. <coughs> There were gaps, and I, I was just young and I was trying to be able to understand. But I think that if we approach it slowly and then we're looking at both to try to create some revenue, which is, I mean, I'm sure the taxpayer would be quite pleased if we should lower the tax rate as well, that I would think it might be something we should try. Yeah, and now I'm okay. Now that I know how it works budget wise and stuff, if we're going to use a small amount to start off with. Well, it, just as an aside, not directly related to that, just so you know, um, uh, when I came a lot of the grants, we weren't claiming our administrative fees. So we started doing that this year, where, where uh, Lynn and I are working together to make sure that we can claim and uh, reimburse all the administrative costs that are available to us. So that number is going to go up as well. And as we make improvements in our Medicaid billing, so we're going to have all these other little Revenue sources, hopefully, to you know drive down the you know the impact of any sort of uh, budget increases in the future. Hopefully, that will help offset some of that. So we're really working towards getting that. That's our goal. Any other I was asked to bring some information about our comprehensive school improvement and where we are with that. And where we are with that. Thank you. Um, so I have this, these, these slides that talk about what does it mean 
So we uh, have been a comprehensive school improvement designated. Because we are the lowest 5% in the state, um, our scores are low in achievement, which refers to the aggregate scores, our students' performance on math and reading. Um, grades three to eight compared to every student in the state. And you can see that our, uh, our raw score there, we are at 1.64, the state is at 1.86. Uh, growth, we are also, um, we didn't make it three years in growth, and that's the percentage um, of the growth between what our students have earned the previous year, the previous number of years, versus now, and we're 36.1 versus 39.83. Uh, equity is the difference between special education and regular education students. We're 43.44 and the state is 48.86. So our numbers are low um, for a variety of reasons, but not insurmountable. It, it's just not insurmountable, we can do it. So the improvement cycle that we're on, year one right now, this year, we're working on um, diagnostic <coughs> review and action planning. So what we have had done is uh, we had a company come in and do a comprehensive needs assessment, and I have that information. We're also having a, having a state uh, a state program come in called WestEd, and they're going to do another one to collaborate, to kind of triangulate what we already know. And uh, so this, is, this school improvement service will assist <coughs> us with planning, the planning year and the compliance that we need to have. So they're going to help us come up with a complete plan, although we pretty much have a plan going on. Uh, next year, we're going to implement what the plan says, and we're going to use uh, state funding for some